Greetings, my fellow bully bashers and feline finders alike. I'm Brandon, the Bambi Man, and welcome to Golden Ticket Reviews, where if it's classic or crap you see through it, I review it. And today, in honor of one of my reviewing cohorts, Bob Show, we're going to be looking at one of the most infamous movie stinkers in recent memory. This is Derek Savage's Cool Cat Saves the Kids. This is going to be fun. Now I'm just going to preface this video by saying that yes, the creator of this film, Derek Savage, has had trouble with cyberbullying and fair use dealings in the past. But I'm not going to rant about that forever. I'm just going to judge this as a film based on its own merits. Or what little it has. After we see a title screen where we see that they decided to go with the text choice of Comic Sans, which is the closest thing to intentional comic we'll see in this film, we see kids trying to scream that they want off this set of green walls, and the finest homes on Zillow.com are seen, where we enter the home of the titular Cool Cat, who most of you know who've seen the countless other reviews of this, knows is a guy in an orange feline fursuit, who might be wanting some bigger royalties after saying lines like this. Wow! This looks great! <laughs> There you go, sign. <laughs> How bored and pathetic do you have to be to start speaking to non-sentient signs? Isn't that right painting of that guy with the glasses that my brother made for me? Huh? <laughs> Good one. We then see Cool Cat meet with his little friend Maria, who gets greeted at the door by Daddy Derek, or douchebag as most YouTubers call him. Hi, Maria. Cool Cat's in the kitchen. I know, we're making signs and they're awesome. I know I saw them and great job. You guys have fun now. Thanks Mr. Derek, we will. Okay Maria. And just to let you know, he had a cleaning a few days ago, so no fleas are going to be found on the premises here. Heck, we ranked the second cleanest household next to that lovely cave in Wolf Burbia. They appear to be making signs so that Cool Cat can begin his campaign for school president. Yes. The giant furry cat, played by an obvious 20 to 30 year old, is running for school president. Though maybe Maria and him are some of the more gifted kids in town, it could be community college president they're referring to for all I know. However, they appear to be getting stalked by the school bully Butch, who not only has the same name as one of the felines from Tom and Jerry, a better cat related piece of media you could be watching, but he also looks like one of the actors from Spooky Buddies, and bizarrely enough, his acting is just about as good, too. Lord, I feel like picking on someone. And look over there. If it's not Cool Cat Maria, they think they're so cool. Long well, rip punk up. Maria's that's pity, eh? See how texture's ugly. <laughs> so this is what happens when the seed of Chucky is in human form. <laughs> Go figure. Hey, Cool Cat, I just got a text. But I don't know who it is. Well, there's only one way to find out. So, see what it says. It could be good news. I love to get good news. Talking about the good, good news. Ain't that the song from James and the Giant Peach? Seriously, isn't it? Needless to say, the next few minutes goes as follows. Maria gets Butch's bad hair text and feels bad. Though really, he's just jealous he doesn't have the gracious flowing locks that only CoverGirl can provide. Butch sends another mean text, and Cool Cat says this. And I love you too. And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids. Whew. Well, that's a load off my mind. For a minute there, I thought you were actually going to say that you liked four kids. Ha ha ha! And forget I just pumped her! And everyone thinks Cool Cat's so cool. And they can clearly hear and see you run like a Monday to Friday brain. I'm bored with this. How long can we keep this act up? Hello, this is Cool Cat. Why do they call you Cool Cat? They should call you Dumb Cat. They should call you Dumb Cat. Yeah. At this point, I'd use a Taken reference, but Bob Show already did that joke, so let's move on. After making the worst laugh in human history, Butch decides to become a graffiti artist, spraying Cool Cat signs, before a gust of wind blows paint into his face. So he makes this remark after running away again. That didn't work either, but I'm bored with Cool Cat anyway. Wonder what else is in this box? Uh, <laughs> you don't want to mess with that box. I'm pretty sure Tentacolino and Legend of Frosty are inside. Also, possibly a future polar bear movie, but I'm just guessing. Jamie and the other Bonehead are recruited by Butch to start spray painting and stealing stuff which saddens this girl named Madison. Well, here we go with the most famous line of the movie. 
He's about to graffiti our neighbor's wall. And it's not cool to paint on someone's wall. Well, it is also not cool to butcher up a line. Did that work? I think it worked. Cool Cat begins his mission of stopping the spraying and tries to talk down these poor defenseless youths who will probably grow up to be hip-hop dancers or members of Tony Hawk's crew. But Butch promises he'll get Cool Cat next time. Later, Cool Cat's place, Daddy Derek and Maria go in where we see Mama Cat. Clearly, Cool Cat is Daddy Derek's stepson. Apparently, Cool Cat's next agenda item is to be cyberbullied, because it said so in the script, you see. Behold, the greatest imitation of the Not the Bee scene you'll ever see. And now we enter the black void probably felt by most people after viewing this movie, where Cool Cat learns to stand up to bullies. I'm not a scaredy cat. I'm not gonna hide. So, I'm gonna learn to stand up for myself. <laughs> What in the name of Professor Juice is this? The next morning, Cool Cat is going to Hollywood with Daddy Derek. Here, I'll help you get in the car here. Was it locked? Yes, it was, Daddy Derek. Well, that's for safety purposes. Much like the DVD case of this movie, huh? While viewing some stars in the Walk of Fame that I'm sad don't include Shaun the Sheep and Skeeter Valentine, we see that apparently Cool Cat has been asked to be in the Hollywood Parade. But first, we have to go back to my fun house. So come on kids, let's all go to Cool Cat's fun house. That was pointless. Gotta do it, gotta do it. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, give me a second. Let's go tell Mama Cat. Give me a second. I'd race you to the doorway, but you'd beat me. The greatest father-son relationship since Larry and Nick Daly. But Chatty Catty seems to need to wants to have something great to bring forth to the parade, and after spontaneously changing shirts and breaking the fourth wall... But first, I need to brush my teeth so I get that nitty fresh breath! <laughs> Can I have some privacy, please? You're not even going pee. Karma Cat Melian goes to his daddy Derek and asks for help on that whole parade thing. So they plan to write a new song that will surely become the new jam of 2015, yo! Oh, Daddy Derek, I'm full of suggestions! Like, how about Cool Cat Loves to Rock and Roll? Oh, yeah! Oh, 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 oh! Cool Cat Loves to Play Drums! Oh, you do love it! You're really good on drums, too! All right! <laughs> how about Cool Cat Loves to Waste Precious Minutes Spouting Stupid Lyrics? I'm just gonna say it. This cat is no Joe Bonamassa. Thanks, man, and it wasn't me. This is a special guitar. Hey, check it out. It's autographed by the Van Halen Band, and it was autographed back in the 1980s. Does this guy just dream every night to be on Pawn Stars? Well, given that his acting is just about as good as Chum Lee, it wouldn't surprise me at all. We then transition abruptly to this green screen room where Creepy Catson tries to show off his effect skills with vocal stylings of an Eric Estrada rap? Yo, yo, yo! My name is Cool Cat and I'm the coolest cat there is. I love to play and have fun. And I'm always on the run. The sun is shining and I'm feeling fine. Strangely enough, I've seen weirder music videos with talking animals. They think they're safe with the stripey trick. But one little scare and we'll take our pick. And again, run! Seriously though, Macklemore's duet with Idris Elba makes more sense than this. I challenge you to a dance off. Hands off, could this song just please stop? Thank ya. After that, whatever it was, we then just have to see Crazy Carl giving a spontaneous tour of movie vehicles for some reason. Though it's hard to get mad at a movie that spotlights the DeLorean, also, the big parade begins, where Eric Estrada and some other chick I won't name out of the fact that she probably would rather left uncredited introduce Cool Cat to the crowd of people who most likely barely know this costume character and just scream for anybody who's in a car on this street at this time of night. 
Thank you for telling me where we are, Comic Sans. Go help type the phrase, TAKE ME SERIOUSLY! After wasting more time mugging to the camera, one can only imagine how dazed this actor must feel after every day of shooting. Derek probably pays him in catnip, too. The next day, Maria and Cool Cat convene at the home of Vivica E. Fox and Eric Estrada. And where is Cool Cat? There he is! Yep! Why not? It's like going to a home with Tom Hanks and Lady Gaga together. Anything I say to make sense of it will only craze me more. B by the way, what does purple mean? <laughs> All of Cool Cat's friends are cool. That kid looks like he's up to trouble. Hmm. He better not be a bully because I don't like bullies. No, no, that line is supposed to go, IT IS NOT COOL TO BE A BULLY! I tried to stop him, but I didn't know what to do! I got scared and became confused! Actually, that line wasn't in the script. This is ad-libbing from the poor guy who stuck as this creepy fella day member for several more hours of shooting. Luckily, our celebrity guests have good advice for constantly cat-like in Maria. The bully got embarrassed when I yelled at him, and he ran away. And I was there, and everybody was so happy because that bully messed with all the kids. Now that is a lie. You clearly did not go to the same school as Vivica A. Fox. If you did, then Daddy Derek would probably be a stalker if he knew that and put that in the script. Well, now that I think about it. The next time Butch comes, Cool Cat scares him by putting on his... Angry eyes! We're not gonna give you our lunch money! I'm not afraid of you anymore, so you better leave us alone! I'm a bully, and I don't like to sand cactus. Leave us alone right now! After getting the bully to cry on home to his mama, Cool Cat decides to sign up for a writing contest where the first prize is a hundred dollars! He comes up with this character called Charlie the Trout, no doubt one of the rejected Gaither's Pond characters, and decides on this story called Charlie the Trout Makes a Lot of Friends, soon to be placed next to Stu the Cockatoo is new at the zoo. We then see Conway Catlike doing his daily exercises and some more creepiness from his kinfolk. Boy, that cool cat's something else. That's an understatement. Come on, honey, I'll help you clean up here. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Here's one. Let me help you right there. Oh. <laughs> we call this teamwork, huh? Oh, I love teamwork. It's so much fun. <laughs> Then Crawly Katniss goes outside to have fun in his front yard with Mike and Maria with a bouncy ball. I got a bouncy ball and it's really cool. It glows in the dark and bounces real high. What's it made of? I don't know. I guess some type of rubber. Rubber bands, rubber balls, made with super special density. They then hear about a person stealing candy from babies. Literally. Guess who it is? Kid. I'm a bully and I'll be back! Thank you for your help, Cool Cat. That was very heroic. It was nothing! And thanks for your help, Mr. Policeman! The officer later got fired for talking to a crazy guy in a cat suit for longer than five seconds without cracking up once! Please don't hesitate to call the police if we could ever help. We're here to protect and serve. Thank you, Officer Crest! Wait, Officer Crest? I take it back, he got arrested for birthing the Alpha and Omega sequels. And the more I see Daddy Dork's face, the more and more he somehow morphs into Gary Busey. Now they go outside to find treasure, only to find a firearm? I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm confused. No, 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 no. The first thing we need to do is to stay calm and don't touch it. It's a gun over there. I can bring it to school and take everyone's lunch money. It's going to be. That time for me. <laughs> you are clearly insane if you think this is how kids talk, Daddy Douchehole. Butch takes the gun away, possibly to sell it on Bull eBay, the finest stolen items on the market. And the other kids decide to justify why telling grown-ups about the weapon is important, rather than just hurrying it up and just doing it right off. Which leads to Daddy Derek doing the appropriate thing and contacting Butch's father James. Of course, his name has James in the title. And I'm still recovering from the Brunden phrase of 2009. 
The next morning, Cool Cat gets taken to school by Daddy Derek as him and his friends reenact Baywatch for some reason, and prepare to head inside as Butch and Bonehead get arrested for their gun-related issues. Later, on the set of Nine Lives Part 12, The Revenge of Kevin Spacey, Cool Cat is announced to be school president. Well, congratulations. We had faith in you, son. There you go, buddy. We knew you could do it. This is a family of overactors, if you couldn't tell. Now, here is something refreshing, and here's something cool. Check it out, Cool Cat. You won the National Kids Writing Contest. Here's your certificate. And here is your check for one hundred dollars. Congratulations! Well, luck be a contrived and over-exaggerated lady tonight. <laughs> Help me, please. And I realize it's not about the money; it's about making great stories. And this award's for the kids. Wow, cool cat! That's a super duper statement. You're on a roll. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Maria. Please, just stop! Ugh. Okay, I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna go through my end summary in the quietest voice I can. Stupid cat gave me a headache! My god, this is an amazingly awful piece of filmmaking, if you can even call it that. The acting is wrong, the editing is wrong, the writing is wrong. I'll say the morals are well-intentioned, but they're just executed rather poorly. It is beyond entertaining, however, due to its badness, yet it's hard for me to recommend watching this in its entirety by yourself due to its director's history with actual cyberbullying and the fact that it makes this whole picture kind of hypocritical in retrospect. I do recommend, however, that you see every review of it as possible, because so many YouTubers have gotten great material out of it. I Hate Everything, Hardcore Kid, Bob Show, of course, and especially Blink, Josiah Clark's YouTube channel. His review is just awesomely hilarious. You paid for the whole seat, but you only need the edge! Seriously, how is it that this guy hasn't gotten more popularity? He's severely underrated. Be sure to tune into Bob's channel this month for more grandastic reviews. Until next time, I'm Brandon the Bambi Man, and I'll see you next time at the movies. Exquisite! Oh, I need some Tylenol. My Maria, don't you know I've come a long, long way? I've been longing to see her when she's around, she takes my blues away. Sweet Maria, the sunlight surely hurts my. Sky.